Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for spending your valuable time with the ADAPT 2030 channel. Let's talk about the earthquake window. Matt, I was going to send you an email. Might as well do a video to explain it in pictures. The idea is simple. Once you know what you're looking for, four gas giants in a single quadrant of the solar system, we roll through that toroid looping magnetic mixing field, the anomaly. October of 2024, like it was in 79 AD. Looking at it on the charts here. 2025 in the spring, we're going to come through a gravitational well where all magnetic bodies will be behind the Earth, pulling everything directly into us. More geometry in the planets. So it's about the earthquake windows. You notice they're in clusters. You can pick it out. 2016, 2018, 2022, it's all about the clusters. And it seems to have something that when we pull away from the magnetic coupling of Jupiter, we begin to get the earthquakes. Now we're much closer into this magnetic anomaly. So can we identify some earthquake probabilities? Around March 17, 2023, Trident. April 10, 2023, Earth, Sun, Jupiter, Saturn. And November 5th, perhaps, as we break magnetic coupling with Jupiter and Saturn this time. So the idea I've been following since I discovered this about seven years ago. It seems that when we have resets of society four gas giants line up in a single quadrant of the solar system. So I've tried to put some causation into that. What happens on our planet? And what is it that causes the apex of society to be re reduced back down to work its way back up either in a 2000 or a 4000 year cycle? Now, in addition to this, there are earthquakes. As we've seen the uptick in the last two years of larger and larger quakes in clusters, can we forecast out not precise days, but windows, if you will, because preparedness is all about probability. And if the probability would occur in a certain window time frame based on celestial events or intersolar system lineups of gravitational bodies, that might be something to work with to give us just one extra informational arrow in the quiver to help us deal with this and plan for what's about to intensify greatly. But first, we need to take a step back into the past to see the method to the madness, or maybe it's clarity. So when I say four gas giants, I'm talking about Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and they seem to line up regularly in a single section of, or a quadrant of, what appears from Earth as the solar system. will all be bunched in one single area. The bunching can be loose or can be tight, so if we go back, this is BC, so we're looking around 599 BC in the above chart that you'll start to see the Earth sandwiched between the four gas giants again, but the alignment not really tight like we're about to run through. But you can see some disruptions in society based on these same dates, those of you who love history. And if we jump up to 100 BC, about 2100 years ago, you'll see something a little bit more similar where Neptune, Jupiter, Uranus, and Saturn are sort of making that square out in the solar system. Not exactly precise, but 90 BC is where we're getting really close to in this 2024 event. The Wall Street Journal warned, just don't sit there, do something. Have you checked the value of your home, your 401k? Many Americans are too afraid to look at their 401k and their IRA account statements. Isn't it time you took retirement matters into your hands with a self-directed IRA with physical gold and silver? Not paper, physical gold and silver. Call the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Remember, Patriot Gold Group offers the No Fee for Life IRA where your 401k or IRA can be in physical gold or silver on qualifying rollovers. That's 888-546-7020. And now on with the video. There's also some other similar matchups, say 269 BC. But if we come into more of our modern era, 1356, you can find some massive mega floods across Germany in the once in a thousand year kind of range during this. 
Also chapters of history riddled with global liquefaction events, otherwise known as mud floods. So I'm wondering if this is a precursor to a mud flood. You know, 1665 seems to be that kind of era that a lot of people pin to. There was a reset that occurred and a lot of buildings were buried and technology was lost. So is there any credence to this? That is uncertain. It's a possible point to plug into an equation. We'll know soon enough in October of 2024. Now between now and then, this, I'm gonna call it a magnetic anomaly because it does seem like whatever is pulling gravitationally within the solar system is having an effect on the crust. Now then you need to run into electromagnetism on the sun stepping down and the Birkeland current inflows into the sun. Also turning down as we head into this grand solar minimum in addition to, so originally I thought in my research that the lineup of these four gas giants was the trigger for the onset of the grand solar minimum. So which is it? We'll finally know eventually after this 2025 window rolls through, how much is it going to step off from now until then? Is it going to be gradual or is it going to be exponential? I, The latter is my guess, exponential. So now it's we're looking for patterns and the patterns will determine something else that's happening where the planets lie in their orbits the gravitational tugs on those as well as the electromagnetic interplay on that we're gonna need both so first let's start back in 2015 because this is really when I started doing the research about the onset of this grand solar minimum and noticed this pattern now looking back in hindsight it seems that earthquakes are clustered around certain times of the year or they come in pairs through months. So this is what I would consider the very first year of gravitational and electromagnetic effects from a changing sun and the four gas giants beginning to line up into their square visible perception wise from the earth. So we got the first box which you'll see is a February cluster and then we got the May cluster and you notice every month after that September, October, November, December two quakes above 7.0. So I was wondering what is happening at that time and as we look at solar system scope here all charts will be from solar system scope tonight that you see with this uh, planetary geometry. You notice that the Earth was definitely between Jupiter and Neptune during the September bevy of quakes and the November cluster seems to have been an Earth, Sun, Saturn along with Jupiter interplay there and as we moved into December it hadn't really moved that much but it seemed more of an interplay between Jupiter and Saturn as well so if you start to look at the gravitational effects on the bodies okay that is anecdotal evidence could it be some coupling or decoupling of magnetic fields so list of earthquakes in 2016 again they come in clusters this is what the the pattern recognition is on this we got the April cluster the August cluster would be July because that's just really two days out from being in August and then September 1st is just one day out of August. So I'll lump those together as the August cluster and then we have a December cluster here. So it seems to me that as the Earth connects with Jupiter and starts to pull away from it, the decoupling of magnetic fields is what's setting off some of these quakes, not all, some. But now we have the direct interplay with Saturn on a triangle and again Jupiter, Earth, and Neptune are back in play just on the opposite side of the Sun this time and as we move forward this is where the magnetic field has broken with Jupiter as it's swinging around at the end of summer in the northern hemisphere and you notice as we have swung around in our in our winter the recoupling with Jupiter begins as well as another Earth Sun Saturn pattern there and once you see this it does seem to have a a method to it. A lot of it seems magnetic slash gravitational but as our Sun steps down there's going to be more gravitational and electromagnetic activity in Jupiter and Saturn. So 2017 we're looking at the January cluster, the September cluster and the November cluster. So if we look at January what happens again it's locking and starting to interloop with that field coming into Jupiter as it grabs hold 
And what had happened, the Earth swung out again and broke that magnetic connection with Jupiter. It almost seems as if you're running the models, Jupiter seems to almost stand still for that one second. And that seems to be where some of these quakes occur, is that coupling and decoupling on Jupiter's magnetic fields interplayed with Saturn and conjunctions with Neptune or Uranus. November 19th, we start to see the same interplay and these earthquakes keep occurring in these same zones again and again. So let's bring it over into 2018, January cluster, August cluster, November cluster, well, I should say December cluster, because November 30th is just a couple days away from being included in December. So that, I'll use that as a single window there as well. If we go over to January, what do we see again? The Earth as it locks with Jupiter poles, and it seems to have that triangle function with Saturn, but also a connection with Neptune. Moving forward in August, again, we get that same pattern. Now Jupiter's starting to swing around, so we should get further away into the September, October, November, December coupling, which would then have that same magnetic breaking away, especially as we move into 2022 and 23. And as we see the December cluster for 2018, we got the Earth, Sun, Saturn. Now keep in mind as we move forward year by year, the forecast giants are moving into their square, which they will ultimately be at the apex of whatever that magnetic anomaly is in October of 2024. 2019 quakes, only two clusters that year, May and July. I threw June in there just at the end. I should have ripped that out, my bad. But anyway, we'll go with it. So the May, again, you're looking at how the Earth had come around the Sun and then locked with Jupiter, but this time Jupiter and Saturn are definitely forming some sort of interlooping field there. And as we come to the July quake, again, that's right where the Earth is starting to pass around in its orbit and rip away from the magnetic field of Jupiter as it continues on its yearly jaunt around the Sun, bringing us summer and winter. 2020, there are only two clusters of quakes this year, June, July, and October. So. I'll run through the June dates here. Again, it's right when we couple up with Jupiter right there, tight. And now this is where it gets interesting because the causation of coupling magnetically really starts to show itself from this year forward in 2020. And you'll see it again as the Earth spins away, seemingly leaving Jupiter just for a moment in time what appears Jupiter standing still. Right at that decoupling, we get into the quake window again. If we follow into 2021, the earthquakes are pretty much sandwiched around March, that window, and the July-August. Because again, July 29th, and you're just two days away from coming into August. So we got the March and the August window. And if we look at March, we do have a Neptune sun. And Earth really hasn't swung around to start coupling with Jupiter. Oh, but it did right there in August, and it's very close now. As we move away into 2022, it starts to decouple and then we get into a few different quakes on that same field, if you will. And I might say this is not exactly perfect because as the Earth spun away through the end of 2021 into 22, breaking magnetic coupling from Jupiter, there were no large quakes during that time. But if we come into 2022, we got the full November and the full September window, just those two months. So what's going on with those two months of activity and coupling? Here again, Earth is very close to Jupiter. And as it moves away, again, you'll get that moment of standstill in time as the Earth moves around in its orbit and Jupiter seems to stand still for just a moment as the Earth breaks and speeds ahead of Jupiter, but that's the magnetic decoupling. But at the same time, now we're starting to see those four gas giants beginning to square up there. Moving into 2024, and if we come into 2023, we've only had you know just a few months of the year. We got January and February, which the January quake is breaking magnetic field coupling with Jupiter as it continues around its orbit. And if we come into February, which is a little bit further along, we get that Earth, Sun, Saturn line up as Jupiter maybe will interplay now because it's so close and these fields are starting to interact definitely at some exponential increase versus the norm of spinning through the solar system by themselves. Hope that made sense so far. Now you can go off to solar system scope and start moving the Earth around in its orbit and you can find that coupled decoupling. So let's do this in real time here. As the Earth was coming around 2022, I thought there would have been a quake approximately here 
in the June time frame as it locked with Jupiter's magnetic field. But as we do come around into September, an earthquake window, obviously several quakes, September. And as we move through, then we get the November set of quakes, which was the decoupling of the magnetic field as it pulls away from Jupiter. We just have a very short window of quiet, full set of earthquakes in a window beginning and middle of January. And as we come into February, remember the Turkey quakes, that was a direct Earth, Sun, Saturn alignment with Jupiter. So in my opinion, with the magnetic coupling and decoupling of Jupiter, as well as the magnetic anomaly intensifying in the outer solar system each day moving into its apex in 2024 October, we should see a quake cluster starting around mid-March because you see the Earth is behind the Sun and we have Neptune, Jupiter, Saturn making it a trident out there. And after April, then it seems like it should remain quiet all the way until mid or end of August where another quake window will open as the Earth starts to couple with Jupiter and interplay with Saturn. And now the square is becoming quite visible in the outer solar system. And in through that September also window as we swing through and start to decouple from Jupiter. So that would be an August-September window. And then we have November and December because the Earth will be breaking that bond magnetically with Jupiter as it swings around the Sun and is probably the solstice time, the largest of the quakes if they were to occur. So the quake window this year should ride from March, April, August, September, November, December. Look for three different windows this year in 2023. The clean match of 79 AD on the left side in October, which is incredibly interesting. It's even the same month that it was in 79 AD. This will be our orbit in the heavens with the square visible from Earth cleanly interplaying between all the magnetic bodies in our solar system in one single quadrant. For those of you who like to look at the stars and the energies in a different fashion, as well, in the spring of 2025, our sun and all the heavy gravitational bodies in the solar system are behind the Earth, forming a gravity well, pulling debris into our planet. And the small diagram on the bottom left shows you what I just showed in the large diagram of where the Earth sits. The smaller diagram on the right with the bit darker colored sun shows that everything's behind us and everything will get pulled into us from a solar system perspective. If you like to look at the planets in a different energetic form, here's what we have for April 15th. When it would be the apex of the fuzz, the space rocks, the dust, the disruptions that would cause as unknown amounts of space debris come raining into the planet with a weakened electromagnetic field and magnetosphere on our own planet. Feel free to share with others the quake window. I do believe those will be the three times of this year in addition to what we've already seen in January, February. So are you prepared for some of these events? And maybe, just maybe, the distractions we're seeing across the planet are to distract you from these inbound events because you weren't warned that you could have gotten ready. And that will be even more disrupting to the social order than hunger would be. Anger and hungry, hangry society would be uncontrollable and unstoppable. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Join Ransom Godwin and myself every Thursday night, 10 p.m. to midnight, talking about the same issues. Two hours at a time, right here at Revolution Radio, streaming across eight different platforms. Hope you can join us then. I appreciate your time, and I'll see you next video. Bye for now.